So, uh, yeah, just a brief recap of uh, who I am, uh, Gijs van der Velde. Uh, I uh, led the, the bridge project in, uh, in Amsterdam, uh, which is now nearing its completion. Uh, so, as uh, just mentioned, uh, we have uh, taken away the, the temporary bridge and uh, our bridge is going to be placed. Uh, of course, uh, Corona can, can uh, put uh, some, uh, some delays on still, but uh, that, uh, that's hopefully manageable. Um, uh, so, so a, a project that uh, uh, that we did uh, also, of course, limited budget, but mainly to break free from the restraints of this, uh, yeah, the the, the objects that uh, that people have been printing and limited to 70, uh, 70 centimeters and then fifty thousand euros. We said, okay, we have to uh, come up with something that allows us to to make this scale jump, and and this bridge uh, shows uh, that that's possible. Um, so, so, of course, uh, together with the Imperial College London, uh, it's extensively tested um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, approved because it's going to be in a very busy area in, in the city, so it has to withhold uh, a lot and uh, it cannot fail. Um, uh, but we, we included also a, a sensor system that allows us to understand how a structure behaves. So, of course, we don't know yet how this uh, material is going to behave over the next 50 years. Um, you know, we're in it for the long game. Uh, additive manufacturing is going to take at least, uh, especially for architecture, uh, 10, 15 years to, uh, to come up with uh, both the business case, uh, but also all the science behind it that uh, is required um, uh, for the safety concerns. And this uh, sensor system that we have installed uh, will help us with that. Uh, so of course, we understand how it's behaving now when put under pressure, uh, but we want to understand how it's behaving when the sun is on there, uh, when uh, it's lying around there for uh, two years or more, and uh, when you have uh, this uh, yeah, special events that, that we haven't thought about or couldn't test. Um, so this really allows us to go one step further into uh, the optimization process in the future. Um, uh, just. Yeah, quickly for people that don't know wire arc additive manufacturing, that's the basic technology. So we use a welding robot and uh, a piece of software that we created uh, to, to print either layer on layer or dot by dot. And uh, here you see it uh, sped up a bit. So also my comment before, uh, it's, it's a relatively slow process for architecture. Um, so uh, you have to imagine two to three kilos per hour uh, when putting down, uh, uh, you know, an FDM kind of strategy. And if you do a dot by dot, uh, then uh, two and a half meters is already a good uh, achievement, uh, two and a half meters per hour. So, so it definitely solves a problem in the area uh, uh, beyond the metal printing that we have now. So we can print bigger objects sensibly and economically, um, but, but still for, for architectural size uh, objects, uh, it's, it's challenging. Uh, so we, we work a lot on the automation. So uh, of course, when, when you cut out the human labor uh, side and everything goes fully automated, uh, you have uh, more of a chance of it becoming uh, an interesting, uh, uh, technology uh, for, for companies uh, to use uh, because maybe it takes a bit longer, but it doesn't need any any staff uh, so that the cost there is less. Uh, so we created a small uh, slicer, uh, but also uh, connected to a sensor package that allows us to monitor and adapt uh, while we print. Um, and yeah, relevant to this session, I think uh, is uh, whether whether a technology like this uh, could have a space application. And uh, I think one of the the real benefits of uh, additive, but also uh, this technology, is that you can reduce the weight of um, uh, the parts you need. And uh, when I was researching uh, for the next uh, speaker, I also saw that uh, this is important because the, the rocket equation says that it pays off significantly when you minimize uh, the structural mass of the vehicle. Uh, so uh, less mass is, is good for, for space and, uh, and therefore uh, we uh, can consider printing uh, larger rocket parts. So this is a relativity space. Um, a colleague of us in, in the WAM industry solely focusing on, on, on printing vessels. Um, but, but I guess this is, this is for space. Uh, but one of the questions we also want to uh, discuss uh, today uh, is uh, whether we can print in space. Um, yeah, we, we of course dream of this. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, whenever we have time, uh, we print uh, interesting uh, objects. Uh, so, um, 
to uh, keep ourselves enthusiastic for this. Um, yeah, our technology has, has a couple of disadvantages. Of course, you need a lot of power, uh, you need gas, uh, which uh, blows away uh, out there. Uh, and, uh, and you need to bring all the materials there. Uh, so uh, whether that's feasible, uh, I, don't, I don't really know. Um, but, but obviously there's, there's already a lot of people thinking about uh, how you can work with uh, local materials, uh, which seems to have a lot of potential. Uh, but then of course you need uh, some type of cool automation and uh, artificial intelligence to solve all these problems that you encounter. Uh, 